Hi, it's Corey. Welcome to the C. Jane Build podcast. I'm here today with Julie Hingsbergen, who is a licensed marriage and family therapist. And we are going to talk about renovations and relationships because we know that issues always come up. So Julie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. <laughs> um, we could probably talk about this subject for hours because we know that renovations and the decisions, it's just, it's fraught when it comes to relationships. And so before we dive in, can you just give us a little bit of your background? Because I know that um, this career is actually a little bit of a, a pivot for you. You were previously a contractor. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Although that would be a good pivot. <laughs> but just tell us a little bit about um, you and your life and how you came to where you are today. Yeah, well, um, I'm Julie, and I am a um, licensed marriage and family therapist in Marin County. Um, I was um, a psychology undergraduate, but uh, took a lot of time off uh, to raise my, my boys. Um, I have two teenage sons um, and went back to school as um, an adult to um, get my master's degree in psychology and um became licensed as a therapist. Um, so, um, yeah, I really enjoy doing this. I've, I've been married for 20 years and have two kids and have gone through two remodels, um, both taken down to the studs. So, <laughs> and both times with husband and kids in tow. So, yeah, <laughs> I know how <laughs> so, challenging this can be. <laughs> yes, you know of which we speak. Um, and I was saying before we started, my my husband and I have done, we've done a new build from scratch. We've done a couple remodel projects. We've done a, a cross country move. But the first remodel we ever did together, we had literally been dating about three weeks. And I was living in New York and he was in, living in DC and he was gonna redo his kitchen in DC. And that also led to redoing a bathroom and redoing all sorts of things. And he kept asking for my opinion and i mean talk about a, a weird place to be because we had just started dating but i had very strong opinions <laughs> <laughs> about um you know what he should do how he should do it but i felt like i could only sort of get involved uh to some degree and uh one of the things i remember so clearly is i was so frustrated by how long it took him to make decisions on things uh -huh. you know like we would He'd bring home, he'd bring some tiles and he'd say, well, what do you think of these tiles for the backsplash or for the bathroom? And I would look at the assortment and I'd be like, okay, that one. <laughs> and he would be like, yeah, I like that one, but maybe I should go back and I, we should get some more and I should look at some more. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that is definitely an issue that probably a lot of couples have is they mm -hmm. just come at the decision-making from such different, um, decision-making mindsets, I guess. That's right. Yeah, it does. I, absolutely. And, and that can cause, um, a lot of friction between couples, right? You've got one, the way it's like the way we handle our anxiety, right? Some people, um, tend to avoid the decisions and they, they, you know, because that means facing your anxiety, right? And then there, you've got other people who are like, the way they handle that anxiety is for them to make the decision and move on to the next one. And that the way people handle it is so that, you know, that drastic difference can cause that itself can cause conflict in the couple. Um, because one person's looking at the other saying like, why can't you make this decision? And the other one's like, you just make these, you know, decisions willy nilly. And so then you've got the, you know, that as a source of contention between the couples. Yes. I mean, look, we're still married. <laughs> all these years later. So somehow we made it through. Um, and I guess the fact that it wasn't my kitchen, I felt like I should not totally get the wrong I was case in the kitchen ended up looking beautiful. And so did the bathroom. So, you know, whatever he, he chose, um, worked out fine. Um, but so aside from that decision-making, you know, why is it, do you think that renovations just cause so much stress on a relationship? Mm -hmm. Well, there are lots of different things that go into the remodel. I mean, a remodel is stressful, period, right? Like, it's just, you know, just a really, really, really hard thing to go through. But then, you know, you if you've got any, like, issues with communication or, you know, any conflict before you even start 
a remodel is going to highlight um, and bring those issues up. You know, it's just those, you know, it can bring up pre-existing flaws in communication and highlight them to a point where it's causing trouble, right? So um, being able to, well, that's one of the reasons, right? And then there's also finances, right? You've got people who are so happy. They'll, they'll go ahead and take out a home equity line because they're like, this is, you know, my dream remodel. I, I, it really means a lot to me and I think it's worth it. And then you've got, you know, another, you know, the other spouse saying, well, you know, we shouldn't do this until we can pay it outright. And so, and, and those differences usually come from, you know, family of origin. You have, you know, what you learn from your parents, right? And so those differences can bring up conflict and it can make things hard. I'm glad to know this is something I can blame on my mother. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh gosh, if she listens to this one day, I'll be in big trouble. But <laughs> Oh my gosh, so funny. But you're and so then, true when you think about the money part. I mean, the spend on a remodel is one of the biggest outlays of however you get that money it's one of the biggest outlays of money you've spent other than your actual house and the taxes on that actual house um you know and money we know is a hotbed so right you've got money you've got communication uh you've You've got got oh sorry what no you've got the way you manage your anxiety right like so they provoke a great deal of anxiety renovations do right and so Um, And there's lots of decisions to be to be made. And um, if you've got trouble making decisions and you are a procrastinator, you are somebody who has trouble, you avoid decisions. Right. Um, And you've got somebody who's making quick decisions. There's going to be more conflict there. Right. And so like we talked about earlier. So, yeah. And then you have the valid issue, which I don't expect a psychologist can necessarily solve of different styles and actually liking different things. So it's not just about the process or how much money or how you're spending, you know, where you're getting the money, but you know, I hate green and you love every, you know, you only love green or, or modern versus traditional or, or just literally like the, the aesthetic of what you're trying to, to do gets in there as Mm -hmm. well. I mean, and I'm sure obviously you, if it's, if you're doing a remodel, those things have come up when you've just furnished the house you're currently living, unless you're moving in for the first time, but th- that can be a big one too. Right. No, exactly. You know, um, I think it compromise is going to be your best friend, right? Like, it, and if you're not willing to compromise, there's going to be more conflict. So picking out those things that are really important to you, um, and being able to compromise on the things that you're, you know, okay with compromising on i mean you just you just have to and so the things something some things for you know one couple might one spouse might be just like this is this is everything to me i am not giving in well then you've got to find some things to be able to compromise on because it can't just go all one way so that's going to be an important thing too you're totally right although that brings up an interesting point there there are going to be times in a relationship certain couples where one spouse might not care at all. And they will say, you make all the decisions, whatever you want, this is kind of your thing, I'm out of it. (laughs) And the other spouse might at first be like, okay, that's great. Like I've got full control, but sometimes that's really frustrating too, that the other spouse isn't, you know, it's your house that you're gonna live in together. And if your other, your spouse or your partner isn't engaging in any way, that, that sometimes can cause trouble as well, I would imagine. Right. No, I mean, that's, that's a good point. And, you know, it can be good or bad, right? Depending on the person. I mean, you have one person like totally be in control. And if the other person doesn't, then, then everyone's happy, but that's not always the case. And they can bring up resentment and then put up a wall. Right. And so before the remodel begins, it's, I feel like it's really important to talk about expectations and availability and, um, how they'll compromise. It's really important to do so from the beginning, right? So if I, you know, if I'm going into a remodel and my husband says, you know, you know, we don't really talk about things. And then all of a sudden we're in the middle of the remodel and I feel like I'm making all the decisions. And he's like, well, I thought that's what you wanted. And then there's conflict there, which could have been, you know, discussed in the beginning before you're in this heated thing. And before you, I mean, the throes of a remodel, right? Like what chaos? (laughs) Yeah. So 
So how would you do it? So I'm about to do a remodel. I mean, I'm not, mm-hmm. but let's say I'm about to do a remodel mm-hmm. with my husband. Like, mm-hmm. What would you recommend we do to sort of get off on the right foot? Okay. So I would recommend sitting down and, you know, trying to have, you know, do it over a glass of wine, do it, you know, do it. And it doesn't have to be this like really, I mean, it's going to be stressful for no matter what. Right. But if you can make it a little bit fun and a little more relaxed and having, you know, expectations about um, your budget, expectations about what, what is important to both, you know, both people, right? Um, what you envision is so important because you you can get into this remodel assuming, right? Making a lot of assumptions of, of like, oh, we're on the same page. And it's like, no, 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 you're not. And to find that out in the middle can, again, make things worse, right? So sitting down and talking about, talking it all out. Um, and one thing I would recommend is doing a list of things that are important from like, you know, minute details to pretty big decisions and having, um, ranking them. Tens being like, this is so hugely important to me. I need to see this as part of the project. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just really important. And one being like, eh, take it or leave it. And being able to clearly communicate, like, this is really important to me, but I'll, I'll, you know, I would compromise on these things and vice versa. You know, putting everything out there and hashing it out before you're in the middle of a renovation. You can't, you know, I think it's a big mistake not to. And not just the things that are important to you, but then you guys have to figure out how are you going to approach it? You know, how are the decisions going to get made? Right. Um, how are the conversations about money going to be had? Um, because that's almost, you know, as we've said, that's almost more important than the, the what is important. Because what, what does happen if someone is taking forever to choose their tile and the other spouse is like, okay, you know, you've looked at 100. <laughs> why, why can't you pick a tile? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, how do you... How do you get past that stalemate? I mean, it's, that's really, it's a great question. And I, I don't know. I mean, I would go back, I would be thinking about that one person who's having a hard time. I mean, and really like, it's a fear of making a mistake, right? When it comes down to it. And, you know, realizing, you know, having a conversation about like, in the end of the day, you know, these top three are all going to look great. Right. Right right now it's right now it feels like it's going to be a huge mistake. Like what if I get the wrong one and they're going to look fine. Right. And so I don't know, being able to acknowledge like this is, this is a fear, right. This is all fear and um, they're going to all look great. And, you know, but it's such, I mean, it's tough. It's really, that's, it's a great question, and I wish I had the magic answer, but just, you know, reflection and thinking like, you know, this is kind of, yeah, it's my fear driving driving this. Yeah, no, I think that's a great way to approach it and try to sort of talk about what's behind the decision hesitation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also think, um, not that you want to try and gang up on someone, but I also <laughs> feel like potentially... You know, there are always going to be other professionals involved. You're going to have, you know, depending on where the decision issues are coming, it could be your architect involved. It could be your contractor. Someone might have an interior designer that they're working with. You know, hopefully, potentially that professional can sort of help with what you just said. Because, you know, we all know when we're in the thick of it, you know, we don't necessarily want to listen to our spouse. I mean, my (laughs) My husband, I love him to death. He works with companies all the time as a job about how to make what they're doing better. And I I would never talk to him about my own company because he's my spouse. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And no offense to him. He helps probably all my, you know, anyone else. Um, I'm sure he'd love to help me, but I'm like, you're my spouse. You know, we can't really have some of those conversations. So in the same way, it might be helpful for have someone else talk about with the spouse about, okay, it's your fear. They're all going to look great. Um, you know, 
uh, and obviously, hopefully a professional that's involved in the renovation, they don't necessarily have to get to a professional like you <laughs> to have that conversation. <laughs> Although I did see that 12% of couples end up in a divorce that really was exacerbated by a renovation, which is a pretty high statistic. I mean, obviously it's, that's not the only thing, but yeah. um, that's a high number. I mean, you've, especially it's really sad because you've just finished an amazing house and now one of you or both of you is not going to get uh, to enjoy it as much. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that, do you think that a renovation or even a build just exacerbates the issues that are already there? Do you think that it can create issues that basically hadn't come to the surface at all beforehand? Um, mm -hmm. Like, what do you, you know, what do you think is, is the norm or how do you think that all plays out? Well, like, you know, I was saying earlier, a, a history of conflict or communication issues get highlighted during a renovation, right? And so I would actually recommend seeing, you know, if, you're having a lot of conflict and you know you have issues of communication, I would actually recommend, you know, seeing a therapist before the remodel begins to work on improving communication instead of waiting to the point where people are thinking about divorce, you know, um, because if you already feel like, okay, I'm, you know, oh my gosh, we just don't get each other or, you know, he's just not, you know, hearing what I'm really saying or, you know, she's, you know, you know, whatever it is, or it's so important to realize that a renovation isn't going to make that all of a sudden make things different. I mean, in a, in a good way, you know, you're not all of a sudden going to be like, we're on the same page about picking colors and tiles. No, you're, it's going to get, it's going to be highlighted and it's going to be a stressful situation made even more stressful. So being able to learn ways to communicate before you begin such a really challenging thing is important. Um, I'd never heard the 12% of divorce after, um, after going through remodel, like that is, wow. That's high, high, much higher than I would have ever thought. Yeah. So. Um, I'm actually thinking this is like a whole new niche. Perhaps we'll create a whole new business here for you. You can just be a renovation therapist and just needs a session or two before someone starts a renovation. I mean, you get a lot, a lot of buzz, a lot of clients, you know. I think that would be, I mean, I would, I would love to do that. I think that would be great, supporting couples. Uh, going through you can work with contractors and architects. It's going to be, it's going to be wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so we're talking a lot about spouses because obviously spouses are coming or partners, I guess you don't have to necessarily be married, but right. you're making your decisions. You are spending your money, um, you know, obviously there's so many issues also if one spouse feels like it's, you know, their money, but the other spouse is the one spending it. But again, those are issues they were going to br bring into the renovation mm -hmm. to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of times there's also kids involved. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are a couple of different things I'd love to talk to about kids. And one is how do you manage their expectations in terms of being an equal voice and mm -hmm. having their their wants or their needs um, listened to and respected, both in terms of their own space and also obviously it's more of an issue in the public spaces. And then after that, I want to talk a little bit about also the fact that for both your spouse and your kids, a lot of times if you're doing a b big renovation, you're living somewhere else during mm -hmm. the renovation. And that somewhere else is usually not as big or as nice or whatever. So let's get to that in a minute. First, you know, how do you deal with, and I know it's, it's, we have to talk about different ages, but so you have teenagers, you know, they are definitely going to have an opinion, mm -hmm. um, not just what they want in their space, but you know, what else they want in the public space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think that's a great thing to bring up because kids want to feel a sense of agency and you know it's their house too um and there's going to be some decisions where you know you, you of course you want to listen to all their feedback and and you know 
validate their feelings of, you know, all of that. But, you know, there's going to be some decisions ultimately that, you know, may be different than what they are expecting. Um, but definitely finding ways where the, you can incorporate their ideas is really important and giving them options, you know, like kids can run wild with like, oh, and then we're going to do this arcade or, you know, and there's things you just really can't incorporate. So you want to say like, here are the things we're thinking for this space. What, you know, what, what do you think would look good? Um, you know, and also if it's their room, letting them go for it, right? Like, well, I feel like kids should have a lot of autonomy in their room and, you know, letting them pick out what they want to do. I mean, you don't want them to have like a little hole to escape at night or anything that they want to create, right? Don't find this trap door over here. <laughs> and pay no attention to that. No, no, it doesn't lead directly to the street. No, don't, don't just ignore that piece. And just don't also think about this little fridge where I'm going to store all my snacks that I'm going right. to sneak out, my candy, candy right. cabinets <laughs> built That's into right. the wall. Oh, That's imagine right. if kids got to really just uh, design uh, right. for their heart's content. Right, um, but they you know like paint colors and you know the quilts and the pillows and the, the throw rugs and you know whatever they're gonna do. like. I think it's great, and they get such, they feel such pride, and it's like their yeah. project, right? And and so um, I would say let them have at it at their room and and do what they're gonna do, and you know of course setting a again it's the same thing. You want to set expectations and budget and have a meeting and you know. But, it, you know, giving them the autonomy to choose what their, de you know, design aesthetic is going, you know, is and what they would like to, you you know, do and um, and using yourself as a, you know, designer, designer, right, as a consult, you know, to, and if they want, if they want it, they may right. not want it. And when we lived, might really might want it. <laughs> when we lived in Brooklyn, we moved into our house in Brooklyn, which was, gosh, 2007. Um, we moved into a townhouse that was one of 14 townhouses that had been newly built. So um, you had, you know, sort of like a mini development. It, it was just on a block of historic brownstones in Brooklyn, New York. And so you really didn't have any choice in the anything in the house. I mean, they came as they were. Uh, but, you know, families, obviously, there were tiny backyards in each one. And I remember one of the families on the block, because we all moved in around the same time, um, everyone had kids except actually for us because we had just gotten married and we were known as the family that didn't have kids yet. Uh, oh. Thankfully, a year later, you know, we had our daughter so we could, you know, relax and not feel, you know, we were outsiders. No, just kidding. We were very, very welcomed. Uh, but one of the families, the coolest thing I ever saw was for their kids in the tiny postage stamp backyard, they put in a built-in in-ground trampoline. Wow. Yeah. So they had dug out, you know, however far they had to go underneath the backyard. And so it was like a almost picture like a swimming pool shell, a tiny, tiny swimming pool shell in your backyard. But right. instead of filling it with water, you put a trampoline on top and it's, like you know, attached to like what the outside of the pool would look like. Uh huh. Yes. It was a big, all the kids on the block, all their kids loved it and actually so did the grown-ups they used to have a big halloween party every year and <laughs> i have to say there were probably a lot of grown-ups who were in costume who had imbibed a little bit of alcohol who probably <laughs> went on the trampoline they used to make everyone kids and grown-ups everyone sign waivers in the beginning oh, really? <laughs> um, but that's a great example like they did something in their backyard that was so i mean i'm not recommending everyone put in a trampoline mm -hmm. but um it was definitely an extreme of oh this would be so cool they had twin boy oh they still have twin boys but um the boys were maybe probably six or so at the time and yeah. um they put in this really cool trampoline wow uh, so let's talk about the living situation so mm -hmm. either one of two things is happening you are living in your renovation in which case um it's a mess and you might not have access to different rooms you might not have access to your kitchen uh mm -hmm. so you might be cooking dinner on a hot plate for three months mm -hmm. or you are living somewhere else now maybe best case you're living in one house while you're renovating a new house that you're going to move into so let's take that aside but if you're living somewhere and then decide to renovate chances are you're either living in it or you're living with the grandparents and in the basement or you have rented a small apartment and 
that brings up, you know, when I was in fourth grade, we moved and we moved to a new townhouse. So we sold our house and we were supposed to move into the new townhouse. But like with any builder renovation frequently happens, it was behind schedule. And so for about three months, we had to move to an apartment. And our old house was in one neighborhood. Our new house was in a new neighborhood. So we had, I guess we had switched and we were going to the school in the new neighborhood, but we ended up living in a third neighborhood. So we mm-hmm. lived in this apartment. We were going to a new school. I was in fourth grade. So my brother was in second grade and we had to share a room, which we had never done before. Yeah. And I, my gosh, I just remember thinking this is the worst thing that has ever happened to me as a kid. <laughs> Um, and a lot of kids share rooms the whole get go. And I think they're better off because they know what they're getting into. <laughs> but I was like, I cannot believe I have to share my room with this kid. And I love my brother dearly. But at the time I was, I was mortified. And also, you know, we were living in a much smaller space. So, mm-hmm. um, what thoughts, what tips can you give for either of those scenarios where you're living in it and you still have to manage your family or you're living somewhere else and you have to manage your family? Yeah. Okay. Well, I've done both. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. First time yeah. experience. Perfect. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I, yeah, when, um, with our first remodel, we moved into a very tiny apartment. I have tiny, tiny little apartment in San Francisco <laughs> and, um, it was tough. Like we had to put a lot of, um, we couldn't, we couldn't take a lot of our things. Right. So a lot of things were in storage when we were in this tiny apartment and I remember the kids like missing things and, you know, wanting certain things. And, um, our, I mean, we were just squashed. And, you know, one of the things I remember doing when we were doing that was taking them over to the, to the new house that was being, it was down to the studs, right? And like showing them like, this is going to be your room and look how much space you're going to have. We're going to be able to put all your, you know, toys here and look at the backyards right there. We're going to put a, you know, swing set out there. And, you know, so getting them realizing, you know, why we were doing this hard work was really important for the kids, right? It wasn't like, oh, and this is your new setup, right? It was, this is temporary and look what we're working hard for. So it was constantly getting them excited for, for the thing to come. And so I felt like that was really, really helpful. Um, for me and my husband, we, you know, I don't know, we just kind of made do. It was not easy. We had the tiny, everything was tiny, like, you know, and so <laughs> taking lots of walks <laughs> by my- <laughs> was really good. Um, and, you know, just again, acknowledging before you do any of the stuff that it's going to be hard and, you know, brainstorming ways of how to make things easier on your family. Um, and that's going to be family specific. So I wouldn't, you know, I can't really go into details on what that might be, but you know, things like taking space, keeping organized, cleaning up after yourself, because in a tiny space, that is going to be magnified, right? Like seeing some dishes or having a mess and you're tripping because there's not a ton of space. Um, and then respecting those boundaries, you know, really important. Um, as far as living at, um, another person's home, um, like you're moving in with in-laws, for example, or if you're moving into your own parent's house, um, making sure your spouse is totally on board, right? That is a decision that you're making, right? So both partners need to be on board with what you're doing. And so this is a time to speak up, right? Speak up, you know, if you're on the fence or if you're like, I don't think this is going to be a good idea, it's not fair to then present the person later. So bringing like, no, I don't want to do this. And here's an alternative. It's going to be really important. Um, if everyone's on board and it just gets hard, again, similar things to living in a small space, right? It's just taking space, keeping organized, cleaning up after yourself. And, you know, if it's, if it's conflict with, you know, you know, in-laws or parents, um, working them out before you move in, right? It's probably not going to be a new conflict, but you're sure there's some conflict and it's manageable, but when there's existing, you know, communication issues or conflict, it's not going to go away when you move in together. <laughs> no, no, it's not. You know, while we were talking about, um, 
living with your kids, storing it in a smaller space. I know a lot of families just in general, sometimes, especially if their kids are younger, put up, you know, sheets of paper in their kitchen or whatever. And it's like, you know, dinner rules or family rules or something. And it's, you know, like, don't poke your sister or, you know, ask to be excused or whatever the, whatever the list is or the things you have to do before you have to get out of the house in the morning. I, I wonder if for families of younger kids, it might be a good idea to have something like that about, you know, the rules for living in this other apartment or living, even living in your grandparents' house or, or whatever to sort of help keep the kids, um, you know, focused and remind them of, of, you know, it's temporary, but these are the new sort of rules of how we have to live in this space um, while we wait for our new space. And I think your idea of taking them over there as often as possible is great. I mean, I remember even when we realized we were moving from New York to California, um, the first thing we did was try to get out here as soon as possible after we told our daughter we were moving because, you know, of course we told her and she looked at us and said, I, I hate you, you're ruining my life. <laughs> Which I understand, and that was a big move. But um, and she loves it, so it's all it all worked out. But um, you know, the more I guess tactile the kids kids can be, so seeing that space. Uh, do you recommend? I'm going to just back up for a second. Um, we talked a lot about setting expectations and really talking through things with your spouse before you start, and um, how things are going to handle. Do you recommend actually just talking about it? Do you think it's helpful to to documented somehow or is that kind of like weird and overkill um like what do you think so that like there's something to refer back to or does that seem too you know corporate and and harsh yeah i mean that definitely wouldn't be my my approach yeah. but but it might work for some couples you know so it's hard to say you know um if you you know if you feel like oh you know we you know we tend to you know, forget, right? And, and, you know, I thought I told you that. No, you never told me that. That might be a great instance where you should write things down. Yes, I did tell you that. Yes, you <laughs> did talk about that, right? So. Yeah, and um, I guess we it, talked about listing important things and that would certainly be written down perhaps so that they could sort of reframe it. And because um, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. obviously they're going to want to do a, a list of the things they want anyway. They're going to need that to talk to to, to go through with the, the renovation and to talk to architects. Right. Um, I also think it could be helpful, you know, if you're having trouble deciding on something, so the, the spouse that uses that space more, like for example, if the husband cooks 95% of the meals, he maybe should have more of a say in things in the kitchen than someone who doesn't cook perhaps. No. Oh, you're going to disagree. Okay. <laughs> We're going to have some conflict here. This is great. <laughs> well, I don't, I mean, the person that cooks all the time may not even care what the kitchen looks like. Just wants mm. to have a nice open space to, to cook enough counters, right? Like, and so yeah. I, I wouldn't make that blanket statement, but I would say that again, coming up with a list of things that are super important. Like I care about aesthetics in the kitchen. I don't care about aesthetics in the kitchen. You know, maybe that's so enough for a number 10 for one spouse. And then maybe like a number five, like, and maybe they're more like, I just want, um, a ton of counter space. I don't care if it's Carrera or, you know, whatever. Um, so you're going to have, it's so important to right. write all. Like one might care about the function more than the, the aesthetic form or the pretty yeah. of it. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, all that is so important because you might go in thinking, um, oh, well, he really cares about the kitchen. And so I'm not going to make any decisions about that. And he's thinking, I don't really care what it looks like or, or vice versa. She, he, 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 she, she, yeah, yeah. like it just, that doesn't really matter. But, um, and so you go in and you're like, well, I thought you were going to, I thought you cared so much about the kitchen. Why aren't you making decisions? It's like, no, I only want, right. And so again, in the beginning, it needs to happen before you even start. Um, anyway. Communication, not enough, communication, <laughs> communication, right? <laughs> before you start. <laughs> yes, before you start. So many things. I think I think that goes along with so much about renovation. Like everyone thinks we can sort of do some of it, at, you know, do it as you go along. But in reality, so many things have to be mm. thought about 
and um, gone through and and really hashed out before you start. And in doing so, it actually makes the process go so much smoother. And then you can get out of your crazy, small, cramped, wherever you're living during the renovation <laughs> sooner. <laughs> you cannot get divorced. Um, and, you know, your kids will only complain and beat each other up uh, for a, a couple of months instead of, you know, seven months or something like that. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, Julie, thank you so much. This was so helpful. I think um, I think that re they're stressful. The renovations are stressful. But, you know, as we've said, the more people can hash out in the beginning, the better. I think the idea of going to see a therapist before you even start can really, even if you're just going for a couple sessions, which I know is not the ideal way to go about therapy, but I think it could really sort of help um, set you up for success. Of course, also post COVID, there's no one can get in to see a therapist. So <laughs> there's that still, but um, hopefully that'll all calm down soon. But I just want to thank you so much for talking to us today. Um, and it's been a pleasure and I'm glad you've successfully completed two renovations um, <laughs> without, without, you know, hating your spouse. And that's what we're all here trying to see Jane Build exist to help everyone get through their renovations in an efficient and effective way. So thank you for, for joining me today. Yeah. Thanks, Corey. Thanks for having me. Of course. Bye. Bye.